for the value of listening is in helping the brands achieve some sort of market objective. So why are companies interested in listening? Well, one of the reasons that listening really started to become sort of what we like to think of as an emerging discipline is simply that these conversations are online. They're available, they're accessible, they're aggregatable, right? they're collectible, they're analyzed. Now, uh, you know, we used to have a paucity of data that was very expensive and time consuming to collect. Now it's very visible and easy to collect. So, you know, so like that, right? Brands are saying, just like, what, what are they saying about my brand? What are people's hopes and fears? What are they saying about the category? Right? What, are, what are people hoping for the future? What are they hoping for their children? So, so, so our attention started turning to right, the web, social networks, blogs, reviews, and things to, 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 to get some perspective to answer those questions. Um, so, so, so as brands are asking these questions, you know, getting interested in listening, and they're saying, gee, can we use it to replace focus groups and such, uh, we started hearing at the AORF, where I work, the Advertising Research Foundation, people are asking questions. What is listening? How is it done? Which is the research. How is it used? And where is it going? So, uh, so we decided that there was enough interest in, in this area where we're, we're putting together some sort of, uh, get our arms around what is essentially an emerging field, right, to give it some shape. Because up until that point, there really wasn't anything where people could go and be the ARF. Our job is to really aggregate the research and expert viewpoints and case studies uh, and tell a story. You know, so a lot. Of, so when we were looking at that, right, was sort of the way that people were talking about it was, oh, I can count brand mentions, I can count competitors, right? I can count likes and dislikes. But um, but that's just more what I call the beauty contest metrics. Instead, it's really what, how should, you know, what is this thing really doing and how should it be brought into the business so that we can build our brands? And so when, when you ask that kind of question, you start to think about what's the kind of world that we're living in? What's, this, what's the marketing environment, what's the business environment that's happening with customers? So what companies are looking to do is to see how can they be fast and agile short term, but have that drive, you know, their product development. In order for that to happen, Right. Uh, we need better information about this changing world that we're looking So, uh, so instead of like you know some of the data I used to use would be collected by you know, social research companies and they would publish a report annually, and you get the trends that are going on in society, and then you plan off those. Now it's really about understanding, uh, looking at the environment differently, and seeing that what we have to bring into our companies really are signals. Right. Yeah bits and pieces of information about you know, this gene. Like any time you're trying to kind of wrap your arms around the field, one of the things that's really important to do is define it. So, uh, so the first thing we did is we looked for definitions of listening. And just about you know, all the ones that we found had to do with listening to conversations. Right? Conversations online are you know, blog posts and reviews and, and things like that. Right? But the written word that can then be you know, harvested and uh, processed. But when I talked to companies that were doing this, uh, I found that that was not sufficient, that there was other types of listening going on. So uh, some of you met Rachel, who was here from Interscope. She works for a company, Interscope, that does um, neuromarketing research. So they look to understand the emotion. So these are silent really expressed. But uh, what they're finding, and through their research is that is that they can discover the emotions through the silent signals that people are giving them, and using that to understand, uh, you know, their their approaches and their mindsets and how they feel and how it influences their later actions. Another type of listening is to behavior, because a lot of us here, I'm probably sure everyone here, analyzes a trend. But what is trend data? And trend data, you know, it's not just points in a line that, that have a that have a slope or a direction or something. They reflect choices that people make that are that are then recorded. And those choices that people make are made with intention. So listening to what so actually listening to behavior and listen as expressed in trends is another form of listening. 